In part A of this question, we are asked to determine the volume charge density symbolized by the Greek letter rho. We know that the volume charge density is equal to the total amount of charge enclosed by our Gaussian surface divided by the volume of that Gaussian surface. In this case, the Gaussian surface is simply the bathroom, which we have drawn over here. Now, to get the volume of our Gaussian surface is relatively easy. We simply take the length, multiply it by the width, and multiply it by the height. That's the standard formula for the volume of a rectangular prism. So we'll go ahead and take the length of the bathroom, multiply it by the width, and then multiply that by the height. And when we do that, we can see that the volume is equal to 15 meters cubed. So that part of the problem is easy. We have the volume. The more challenging aspect is for us to figure out the total amount of charge enclosed by this bathroom. So let's scroll down a bit here and take a look at Gauss's law. Gauss's law tells us that we can determine the enclosed charge right here by simply multiplying a constant by the so-called electrical flux. So in order to get the enclosed charge, we're actually going to need to get the total electric flux through the surface of this bathroom. We can see that the total electric flux through our Gaussian surface is equal to the sum of these little dot products between the electric field vectors and the little dA vector. That's a bit complicated for most to understand, but if we go back up and take a look at the conditions stated in the question, it says here that there is a, an electric field that has a uniform magnitude and also that it is directed perpendicular to the surface. And so with those two conditions, our equation for electric flux greatly simplifies. It actually simply becomes the total electric field multiplied by the total area. That's gonna give us the magnitude of the total electric flux. And remember, you can do that as long as those conditions are satisfied. Those conditions, again, being that the electric field has a uniform magnitude and it is perpendicular to the surface. So we can actually easily calculate the total electric flux by multiplying the electric field by the total area of the bathroom. We might need to back up and find that total area right here. We've written the equation out for the total area. We'll go ahead and plug in the numbers. So again, we'll simply plug in the length and the width and the height for all of these values. We will omit units for the present time for clarity. So when we plug in all these values, we can see that the total area of the bathroom is 37 meters squared. This will come out in meters squared for area. So we have the area. The question gives us right up there the total electric field magnitude. It's 600 newtons per coulomb. So we'll come down here and we will plug in that electric field along with that area. And when we multiply these together, we will see that the total electric flux is 22,200. And then this is newton meters squared per coulomb. Okay, great. Now that we have the total electric flux, we can easily calculate the enclosed charge. So let's do that next. We can see from Gauss's law that the enclosed charge is equal to a constant multiplied by that total electric flux. So we'll go ahead and plug in those values now. So we have plugged in those known values and when we multiply them, we're going to get about 1.96 times 10 to the minus 7, and then we're going to end up with coulombs. Now, we have to be a little bit careful here, because if we scroll back up to the question, we recall that the question says that the air has been charged with negatively charged ions right there. So in our calculation, we're getting a sort of positive answer here, but the question stated that the charges are negative. So do make sure that you make the enclosed charge negative 1.96 times 10 to the minus 7 coulombs. That's very important. Okay, so now we have the enclosed charge. We scroll back up and recall that we had the volume of 15 meters cubed. So now we're ready to go ahead and calculate the volume charge density, which is the charge divided by the volume. So here we go. We're going to take the enclosed charge and then divide that by the volume. And this is going to give us our answer to part A of the question. All right, so we'll pick up the calculator. We'll divide. We're going to get about 1.31, excuse me, negative 1.31 
times 10 to the minus eighth. And then if we look carefully, we have coulombs divided by meters cubed, so that's going to be our unit. And there is the correct answer to part A of the question. We go and look at part B, and this one simply wants the number of excess elementary charges, E, per cubic meter in the room's air. That one's a little weird. As we'll see, it's actually just a dimensional analysis type of question. So we're going to take the answer that we got in part A for the volume charge density. And what we're going to do is basically convert this into the number of elementary charges per cubic meter. We can very easily do this because we know that one elementary charge, in this case an electron, will have a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And if we multiply our answer from part A by this conversion factor, we'll look carefully and we can see that the coulombs in the numerator right here will cancel with the coulombs in the denominator right there. And this is going to leave us with elementary charges per cubic meter. That's exactly what the question asked us to figure out. So basically we just have to perform a little conversion here and we're going to end up with approximately 8.19 times 10 to the 10th. And this again will be elementary charges per cubic meter. And that is the correct answer to part B of the question.